Energy stocks have been slammed by the price of oil and the sector is the worst performing in the market over the past five years. But that might just mean it's the perfect time to buy. In this video, I'll show you what I look for to find the best of breeds in the space. Then I'll reveal the five best oil stocks for your portfolio. We're talking top oil stocks to buy today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. A special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Hey, I'm excited nation. This is the second video in our series on picking the best stocks in each sector and the response has been overwhelming. That first video on the best tech stocks to buy was one of the most popular ever in the first few days and I'm excited about this one. America is undergoing an era of energy independence. It's now the largest producer of crude oil in the world and will soon be the top oil exporter as well. That oil boom is driving an energy renaissance and every portfolio needs a piece of the action. Now because of the worries around global growth, a lot of these companies in this energy sector have been hit hard on those lower prices over the last few years. The sector fund has underperformed the broader market by more than 85% over the last five years. But nobody ever got rich buying when stocks were expensive and this may be the only cheap sector in the market. If you look at the sectors by forward price to earnings ratio, that's the price divided by earnings analysts expect in the sector over the next year, the energy sector is the only one to trade at a discount to its 10 year average. These dark blue lines here are the forward price E for the sector. So right now at a 17.1 times for stocks in the energy sector. The green bar is the average forward price to earnings value over the last 10 years, so 20.3 times for the sector. That means energy stocks are trading at a discount of 16% over that longer term average. That gets even more amazing when you consider some of these sectors like tech are trading at a 30% premium, a third more expensive than that 10 year average and the broader market here using the S&P 500 is trading at a 17 times as forward PE or 14% higher than that long term average. This might just be your once in a decade opportunity to buy oil stocks at a discount. So if you're just joining us, we're doing 11 videos to reveal the best stocks to buy in each sector of the economy. Now I'm looking at each sector from tech to energy, consumer goods and utilities, all 11 sectors to show you how to find the best of breed companies in each and then create that diversified portfolio for growth and cash flow. This is hugely important because even though I love the opportunity in the oil stocks right now, you have absolutely got to have stocks in those other sectors. This is going to give you that diversification you need, smooth out those returns while you wait for that rebound in the energy stocks. So let's get started because I'm excited to talk oil stocks with you. Now if you're coming in late to the series, I'll link in the first comment below the video to the most recent video. I'll also be linking in the video description below all the videos in the series so you can check out all the stocks in each sector. Now those of you in the nation know I'm not just about to throw five stocks at you. I'm going to show you how I picked these stocks first, give you the tools to do this on your own. Then I'm going to show you three energy sector funds that you might consider buying to get that targeted exposure to the sector before I reveal those five oil stocks that I'm buying right now. So here's that graphic again of the stock sectors and today we'll be looking at the energy sector including explorers, pipeline operators, those large integrated companies and then the drilling equipment companies as well. So I looked for four criteria when screening for these stocks to buy. Uh, I'm going to run through these real quickly because I want to get to those stock picks and I already walked through each of these in our first video on tech stocks. If you don't know exactly how I'm using the process here I, I used to pick these stocks, please check out that video linked in the description because these are the fundamentals that you need to be using really any time you pick stocks. So first screening for increasing sales and cash flow are extra important with oil stocks lately because the trouble that they've had on those lower crude prices. Any company that can produce sales and cash flow in this environment is a solid bet. Now that operating margin is powerful like Thanos on steroids powerful and the number one factor I always use to find stocks to buy. This is the operating income so what's left after taking all those business expenses out of sales that baseline business profit then divided by sales. This is the best measure for how well management is doing and something that you want to compare across competitors to find the best run companies in the sector. Now dividends are another obvious choice here. I love getting paid while I invest in and dividend payers just tend to beat other stocks. Now I've picked some cash flow machines in this sector as well. Uh, one with a dividend yield of 10% so stay tuned for that below. Finally I'm looking for companies with a competitive advantage and catalyst for growth. 
You see, the other factors are, are mostly already baked into the shares. The market knows the company's rate of sales growth, its operating margin, and that dividend yield. It's these catalysts that you find and the competitive advantages that make for great long-term investments. Now, I'll share those five oil stocks that I found, but first I wanna highlight three energy funds also that you might consider if you can't find stocks that you really like. So if no stocks fit your screening criteria, you might consider putting some of your money into these funds just to get that exposure to energy investing. Then you can invest in the stocks of the other sectors that we'll talk about in the series, but still have some of that high dividend yield from energy. So our first energy fund is the Energy Select Sector Spider, ticker XLE. Now this, this one holds shares of 28 of the largest energy companies based here in the US, but is surprisingly diversified from upstream explorers to downstream retail. Now companies in the fund have an average market cap of $130 billion. So we're talking about the largest like Exxon, Chevron, and Valero Energy. The fund charges an expense ratio of just 0.13%, which is extremely low and pays a 3.7% dividend yield. While that XLE fund gives you broad exposure to the energy sector, the Spider S&P Oil and Gas Exploration and Production ETF, ticker XOP, is much more focused on that upstream segment of energy drilling and producing the oil. Now this fund holds shares in 60 companies drilling and producing that oil and gas, mostly in the United States. And there are a couple of reasons I really like this one better than that more popular sector fund, the XLE that we talked about. First is the average market cap here is just 23 billion, which is still big companies, but not that mega cap that we saw in the XLE. That means a little bit more flexibility and faster growth for these stocks. You've also got a more diversified fund. Uh, the XLE has more than 40% of its assets in just two stocks, Exxon and Chevron, uh, while no single stock accounts for more than 3% of the XOP fund here. Now, it's not all roses and rainbows, though. The XOP fund has a higher expense ratio of 0.35% and a lower dividend yield of 1.4%, but it's a great fund for your portfolio if you don't want to pick those individual oil stocks. Now, this last fund, before we look at those five best stocks in the energy space, is going to come as no surprise to those of you in the nation. This fund is in our 2019 dividend portfolio, and I love the theme for those long-term dividends. Here, the Alarian MLP fund, ticker AMLP, holds shares of 32 master limited partnerships, which are special types of energy companies with huge yields. The fund currently pays an 8.4% dividend, and look at it against some of these other high yield and cash flow options more than twice the dividend yield compared to REITs and four times the yield you get on that broader market stocks. Now this fund invests across companies in that midstream segment of energy, the pipeline transportations, uh, refinery and storage. These companies charge a fee on volume, so it's not all about the price of crude here. They get a special tax break if the majority of profits are passed through through investors, so you get an insanely high yield on this fund. So even if you do invest in a few of the oil stocks, like the ones that I'll highlight now, you might still consider putting some of your money in these funds. That's gonna give you the opportunity for higher returns from that individual stock pick, but also spread your money out a little bit across those dozens of companies in these three funds. Now our first two oil stocks are gonna be those cash flow monsters in the MLP space with Energy Transfer, ticker ET, and it's 9.9% .9 dividend yield. ET is a leader in the midstream space with 9,300 miles of crude pipeline, making it the largest in the US and assets across that transportation, processing, and storage space. MLPs have been hit just as hard as the rest of the energy space since 2014, but there are some strong reasons to buy in here. Energy Transfer was investing over $8 billion a year in acquisitions and development from that 2015 through 2018 period. You know, assets were cheap after the 2014 crash and management made some very smart moves. Now, a lot of those big development projects are coming online and starting to cash flow. Combine that with the fact that management is planning on cutting investment spending to, to half, just $4 billion a year, and cash flow could surge for this company. Now, the company had a coverage ratio of two times the distribution in its most recent quarter, and this is a very important measure for MLP, so I want to explain it a little here. Uh, the coverage ratio is just the company's distributable cash flow, that's the cash flow that it has left over after maintenance spending, over the amount that it distributes to its shareholders, so those dividends. Now, some MLPs are gonna have a coverage ratio less than one, meaning they're paying out more than is available, something that obviously can't go on for long. So for energy transfer to be able to cover its distributions, a yield that's almost 10% right now, to be able to cover that by two times means that cash flow is all but guaranteed on this one. Better though is that management expects the coverage ratio to come down to about 1.8 times over the long term, which to me hints that it expects to increase the dividend. 
Now, cash flow isn't decreasing from all these new projects and lower investment spending. So there's only a couple of things that they can do with that money. You know, ET is either going to be buying back massive amounts of its stock or hiking that dividend or both. And that's going to be sending these shares higher. Of the seven analysts covering energy transfer, the lowest price target is $18 a share or about 46% above the current price. The high target is at $24 a share, nearly double the current price. Now there is one thing that you need to know about MLPs, and this is something that we've covered on the channel before, but I want to make sure that you get it here in this video. Uh, MLPs are a special type of company that you'll, and you'll get a special tax form each year called a K1 for each year that you own those shares. That form is going to detail the different types of returns from the investment. And you put this into your taxes differently than other dividend stocks. Now you don't get that K1 tax form when you invest in that AMLP fund that we talked about, which is why a lot of people put their money in that instead of these individual MLP companies. But the form is really, isn't really that difficult. Uh, any tax software like Tax Act or TurboTax is going to make it easy and any tax service is going to do it for you. For my money, there is just too much opportunity in these MLPs to pass up because of that little extra effort on your taxes. Enterprise Products Partners, ticker EPD, is similar to Energy Transfer in that midstream MLP segment. Now the dividend yield is only 6.6% here, though the share price has held up better than ET over the last five years, and there's good reason to believe both the price and dividend are heading higher on this one. EPD is a massive company with 50,000 miles of pipeline transporting crude, natural gas, and other chemicals. It's connected to every major U.S. shell play and has 90% of the refineries east of the Rockies. Now researching the company, I found three charts that really prove the case for the investment. First, this graph in the upper right, the blue and the gray lines are the company's operating profits and distributable cash flow. That red line is the price of crude and you see how much oil prices have jumped around, but, but that company's cash flow has grown consistently. This is because the company makes 85% of its gross operating profits on that fee basis. It charges oil companies a fee for using the pipelines and charges on volume rather than the price of oil. This company is generating massive amounts of cash regardless of where oil prices go. Now the next chart here in the lower left again shows oil prices in that red dash against the steady climb in the distribution and the cash flows per share. Now this is a company you can count on to consistently increase the payout. Finally here, the blue section in that lower right chart shows the cash paid out to investors and the gray area is the cash the company is saving. The company has a distribution coverage of 1.7 times, so a lot of cash flow above that distribution, and its cash reserves are actually growing. Those growing cash reserves are going to mean more increases in the distribution and share buybacks to really drive that stock price higher. Not as many analysts are covering EPD, but target prices are all well above the current stock price. The low target here is for $33 a share with the high around $41. And remember, this is beyond that 6.6% dividend yield you collect. Now, energy giant BP has had its problems, but the shares have actually outperformed the broader energy sector over the last few years, and it's paying a monster 6.4% dividend. The company reported a pretty awful third quarter, sending the shares down 3%, but production and financials should improve over the coming quarters. Now, operating cash flow was still solid at $6.5 billion and more than enough to cover that investment spending and the dividend payout. Now, BP owed a $2 billion payment this year to cover the Deepwater Horizon settlement, but that payout drops to just $1 billion annually over the remainder of the contract. The company has been cost cutting since 2013, which is supporting those cash flow and the profits. Now, shares trade for just 10 times earnings, though, though profits are expected lower to $3.13 a share over the next year. Looking at the company's history of beating expectations, I think earnings can come out around $3.30 on the low side, which would mean a price to earnings ratio of 11 and a half times still really in that value territory. One potential for a surprise upside here is BP's 20% ownership of Russian oil giant Rosneft. The asset value has taken a hit on those geopolitical tensions and, and earnings are down on lower crude prices, but this could make for a boom in the shares if that picture improves. Now I'm showing this chart because I have used it all on the other picks, but, but you probably shouldn't read too much into this. With just two analysts rating the shares, you really can't get much from, from this $53 price target. I think shares of BP could easily be worth at least $45 each over the next year and even higher over the long term. You've got some great potential in price appreciation here and a solid dividend payer while you wait. Now Baker Hughes, ticker BKR, is kind of a weird case with its 2017 merger then split from GE earlier this year. 
Now, BKR was rapidly losing market share in its oil field services business until that 2017 merger, but has been able to turn it around over the last year. Uh, revenue in the segment was up over 12% year over year basis in the last quarter, which is way ahead of competitors, which are reporting sales that are flat and even lower over the year. Shares are trading a little rich here at 26 times earnings, but that's only because profits are expected to boom 60% over the next year, which puts the forward price to earnings at just 16 times. Analysts see the shares higher with a low target of $27 a share to a high target of $34 each over the next year. Now, I'm not sure the shares reached that high target, but even the lower one is 26% return on top of that 3.3% dividend yield. So Marathon Oil, ticker MRO, is a smaller oil exploration company at just $9 billion market cap, but pays a 1.7% dividend and has a strong upside potential. Now, this company has struggled under low oil prices over the last few years, but reported second quarter results that were well above expectations. Oil production came in at the top end of what anyone was expecting, and the cost-cutting program has lowered production costs to their lowest on record. Now, just like BP, we're looking at expectations for an earnings decrease over the next year, but the street is notoriously bad for predicting earnings for this company. For example, it beat expectations by 342% and 77% in the first and second quarters. On a trailing basis, shares trade for about 12 times earnings and are probably better than they look on a forward basis. Despite the tough earnings picture, analysts have price targets between $13 a share on the low end to $21 per share on the high end. Click on the video to the right to see the first in our series and the five best tech stocks for your portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.